MVHR, Mechanical Ventilation with Heat Recovery. Who came up with that name? Certainly not the marketing team. Imagine if your iPhone X was called a portable sound telegraph. The chances are you wouldn't have one in your pocket right now. So the question is, what is an MVHR? Why do you need one? And most importantly, why is it something you should choose rather than somebody else? I'm Elliot, this is SolarCrest. I'm going to try and explain why it's the most important thing you're about to put in your new home. So what exactly is MVHR? Best way to show you is to try and draw a picture without missing anything out. I'm not an artist so here goes nothing. Let's start with a box. It's about the size of a washing machine, not quite as deep. It's got two fans in it. One of them drags air from outside and feeds the property. The other one drags air from the property and blows it outside. It's got two filters in it. One of them stops muck from coming into the property. The other one stops muck from going into the MVHR and blocking it all up. Better machines have a second filter that stops microparticles like pollen. There's four spigots to connect to the pipework and on the better machines you've also got a soundproof lining to stop the motor noise from keeping you awake at night. Here's the roof. This one's going to ventilate to atmosphere through the, through the roof tiles. There's a couple of terminals in there, low profile uh, cowls on them so they don't look too hideous when people approach your house. There's the air intake duct. Nice weeping bend there so there's no uh, sharp 90 degree bend causing turbulence and making more noise. And I'm going to draw the, uh, these are the manifolds, put those on next. They help to spread the air around the property as you're feeding it in and also collect the air from the property before you take it out. Call them the supply and the extract manifolds. The better ones have got a soundproof lining on as well. That's to stop any more noise uh, coming from room to room or more noise coming through the ducting and into your room. Here's the ducting that connects each of the manifolds up to the MVHR unit. And now I'm going to start the supply side. So the MVHR slowly feeds air into your bedrooms, living rooms, dining room and any other habitable space like perhaps a home office. That goes down radial pipe and um, meanwhile on the extract side, the MVHR collects stale air from the bathroom, on suite, kitchen and any other wet area in the property. We collect it from the utility room so we can air dry clothing in there without using the uh, tumble dryer. This is the duct insulation. It's very important to insulate the ducting that goes between the machine and outside. This is because if you're bringing cold air into a warm space in the middle of winter, the outside of the pipe collects condensation quite a lot and that can drip off and drip onto your ceiling and the first you know about it you've got a puddle coming through the uh, coming through the ceiling above your head in the living room so it's very important this is insulated typical duct insulation there is either expanded polyethylene expanded polypropylene or it's a steel duct if it needs to be more durable it's going to be boxed in for example and that would have a a jacket around it to keep it warm. We also put um, uh, duct insulation on the pipes that go to the manifolds normally. That's to help reduce the motor noise, uh, breakout noise it's called, from the MVHR fans. Never, never have too much uh, soundproofing on an MVHR. So next I'll draw the uh, direction of the air as it comes into the property. So well, air's getting sucked in through a roof terminal or sometimes through a wall terminal into the MVHR unit and dragged through the machine by that little fan there. Well I've got the blue pen out, I'll show you how the air leaves the building. So that other fan sucks it from the property and blows it out to a different roof terminal. The intake terminal is usually a little higher than the uh, exhaust terminal so it doesn't suck the same air back into the property again. So after the air's come through the heat recovery unit it's been warmed up to almost room temperature by the uh, the heat recovery cell. So that feeds air into the property and here's a warm air leaving the property going through the heat exchange cell uh, where all the heat's extracted from it. Notice that the two uh, lines on the right hand side of the diagram are both blue 
That's because it's cold air going in and cold air going out. Put a few blue dots on there too, because not all of the uh, the heat is recovered. They're only about 90 something percent efficient. So you do lose a little bit of warm air and you do bring a little bit of cool air in, but 90% uh, efficient is better than 0% efficient, which is what you get with any other kind of ventilation. Now I'll draw the ceiling plenum. This is the thing that you see in the ceiling when the whole system's finished. Hopefully you see it, but you don't hear it. it pokes through the uh, ceiling by about 20 millimeters, so it's very low profile. Um, they're quite nice looking. You can paint them. Uh, they blend in very nicely. Not like a built-in speaker. So these ones, the ones we use, feed air out along the ceiling so it doesn't blow straight down onto the back of your neck when you're sitting in front of this uh, TV. It gives you a stiff neck. So just to show you the flow of air coming in, goes down that pipe, through the heat recovery cell, gets warmed up and gets fed gently into all the habitable rooms and then out of the plenums into your bedrooms and whatnot. If you're really clever, you can put an extra filter on the air intake here too. So if you're in an urban area with um, or an air quality management area where you've got um, different kind of outdoor pollution, you can put this filter on and it'll stop gases coming in. Nitrous oxide, uh, nitrous dioxide, sulfur dioxide, all sorts of nasty stuff that you don't really want to be uh, breathing in your property. With one of these you can give yourself effectively a clean room. As a filter to stop debris from blocking it up, and another another fine particle filter to stop uh, microparticles from coming into the property. If you're really clever, you can put a, a heater coil on the supply side as well. So that the idea is this will warm up the air that goes into your property. If you can connect it to a, an air source heat pump that can run in reverse in the summer and deliver cold water then theoretically you can also cool the property as well using the ventilation system. An air source heat pump will feed water through this coil inside this box that you blow air through at either 45 degrees if you want to lift the temperature in the property or 7 degrees if you want to cool the, the air in the property. Think of it as air conditioning light. So on the heating it, bring, it lifts up the temperature of the air going into the property and gives you more heat. If you get your building fabric right and it stops leaking, potentially this is all the heating you need and all the cooling. Some MVHR units can even control the, uh, the heater, the boiler or the air source heat pump, turning it on, turning it off, telling it to go hot or telling it to go cold. So effectively the controller on your smartphone that controls the MVHR is effectively giving you climate control for your house. The ideal temperature and humidity is 21 degrees centigrade and between 50 and 60 percent relative humidity. I'll quickly show you the radial ducting we use. 75 millimeter diameter. You can cut it with a knife that easy. Um, you can route it through stud walls, through floors, through vaulted ceilings. You can bury it under concrete. It's nice and quiet, it solves a lot of acoustic problems. You can bend it without snapping it. It's got a smooth, anti-static, antibacterial lining in it, so it doesn't get all caked up in dust, which means it goes years and years and years and years before you need to worry about cleaning it. So there's your whistle stop tour, now I'll show you a real one. Here's one I prepared earlier. Here's an MVHR unit. It sucks air into a pipe that goes through the outside wall here, goes down here, comes in cold, picks up heat from the waste air, and now it's almost room temperature. It's fed up here into a soundproof distribution manifold, so it's nice and quiet. Down these pipes, straight into your bedrooms, your living room, your dining room, home office, any other what you might call habitable space. Meanwhile, the other fan is sucking air from your wet rooms, your bathroom, your ensuite, your kitchen, anywhere else where there's damp air, odours. It's also worth mentioning that this sucks out probably nearly 50% of your dust from the property, so it's a lot easier on the cleaner. It goes in through this manifold, down this pipe here, goes out past the filter to keep the machine clean. The heat sucks out of it, that goes that way, and then you're exhausting 
nearly cold air out of the wall. That's pretty much it. I've got to quickly mention filtration because this is the reason you should be putting MVHR in your home, more so than a heat recovery. It's the only system that will filter the air that you breathe. Here's a standard G4 debris filter. All machines have one or two of these in. One of them stops muck from outside coming inside and the other one stops muck from inside clogging up your machine. This is what it looks like after three or four months. You've got leaf debris on there, you've got insects, and all of this black stuff is soot from the road. And this filter's a long way from a road. This is an F7 fine particle filter that stops pollen and other miniature particles uh, from vehicle emissions like rubber dust. You can have one of these instead of one of these, but bear in mind it's quickly going to look like that and you'd be constantly changing expensive F7 filters. The better machines have one of these to protect one of these, so you've got both in there. This is what the filter looks like after three or four months. And bear in mind, all of this soot and these, these particles have come through this filter first. So it's important to have both, ideally. If you try and stop muck at the wall terminal or roof terminal using the little mesh that comes with it, this is what it's going to look like after 12 months. It's going to get totally blocked up and then you're going to need a very long ladder, if not a roofer, to help you clean it. We generally peel these off, put them straight in the bin. Here's a great install. Decent machine sitting on an anti-vibration mat. Super insulated expanded polypropylene ducting so there's no condensation problems. Comes in at high level, goes out at low level so you don't suck the stale air back in. It's got two acoustic manifolds connected to the best radial ducting on the market, all hidden in the eave space. Nice and tidy, easy to box in, very compact. Everything is inside the thermal envelope, which keeps all the heat inside the property. This one is a big pile of bits somebody bought online. It's been installed by an inexperienced installer who was following a free design. It's held together with tape. There's no insulation where it needs to be, so there's going to be condensation problems. And uh, you can't get the front of the machine off to service it. So it's a problem waiting to happen. This is a problem that has happened. The less said about this, the better. It's totally ineffective. There's no heat recovery. And all it's doing is sucking, sucking airborne mineral wool particles up here and distributing them around the home, which isn't ideal. And if you want to know how I know the difference between a budget system and a premium system, here's my first machine. It's had more motherboards and controllers than Trigger's broom, which is what we used to call it. You control it by fiddling about with the jeweler's screwdriver, and this one's just under five years old. Here's the new machine. It's going to last forever. Purrs like a kitten, double air filters on the air intake, much better ducting, no condensation problems. Also control it by a wall mounted controller here or on an app on your smartphone. You shut the door, forget about it. You don't know it's there. Perfect. I mentioned at the start of this video, I thought it was important for you to be involved in the specification of your MVHR. This is because your builder, architect, plumber and electrician, they aren't the people who are going to be living with this system when it's finished and installed in your new home. No disrespect, but most people don't know the difference between a budget system and a premium system. It's not easy to figure it out and you certainly don't want to be the one finding out the hard way. In a nutshell, the differences relate to functionality, longevity and most importantly acoustic performance. All MVHRs move air but not all of them will do it quietly for the life of the building, which is how long you need ventilation for. You can live without clever things like heating and cooling through the MVHR instead of air conditioning or central heating. You can manage without temperature, humidity and CO2 sensors that all help your MVHR to automatically adjust your indoor environment, keeping it healthy and comfortable. You can manage without pollen or traffic pollution filters too, if they're a bit expensive. But nobody wants a noisy system because that'll drive you mad. It's called the dripping tap syndrome in the trade. It's not really noisy, it's just noisy enough to slowly wind you up. It's a bit like tinnitus. You have to learn to live with it because there's nothing you can do about it once you've got it. Designing a system that runs silently needs more knowledge 
that you can get from a data sheet or brochure. If your MVHR designer can't explain things like static pressure, laminar airflow and air velocity and how they all affect your nice peace and quiet then you need to ask an expert. So in summary, a good MVHR is important because it provides clean fresh air in every room at almost room temperature, at the same time removing dust and odours. The best MVHRs can connect to other green technology to provide heating and cooling too, effectively giving you climate control for the home. But the most important thing about MVHR is that it allows you to live in an airtight home, which is good for your wallet and good for the planet. If you have any questions at all, just drop us a line.